SOC 2 has a type 1 and a type 2. What is the difference between a type 1 and a type 2? So SOC 2 type 2 is, an, is observed over time. And that's relevant because a lot of the controls that you're going to be promising to do are things that are ongoing and continuous. Type 1, in contrast, is a point-in-time observation. What that means is that, for example, I may say I'm going to do uh, a penetration test once per quarter. The only way that can be audited is if I'm observed over a quarter. Same with things like employee performance reviews once a quarter or ongoing um, monitoring of employee devices or ongoing intrusion, dete intrusion detection on my servers. A lot of security tasks are ongoing. They're policies, they're processes, they're things you're doing continuously. A type 1 audit just checks what you're doing at a moment in time. So a type 1 audit can, for example, check, do I have the hard drives of my team encrypted today? And you can get that in your type 1 audit and it'll confirm that. A type 2 audit is going to confirm, okay, over this three-month period, were the hard drives of my employees encrypted continuously? A type 2 first is going to contain more controls because it can contain controls that require time to demonstrate. And it's going to be more comprehensive and frankly more relevant to, to, to someone receiving it because to get ready for a type 1 audit, you just need to be correct for a moment in time and then no one's checking whether you're staying in compliance after. Where I often see some companies go wrong is they prepare for a type 1 audit, they have everything looking correct for an instant, they freeze time, they get their audit, it's correct, but then the next week they stop doing these things. You hire a new employee, their hard drive isn't encrypted, you're not installing anti-malware on their devices. So a type 2 audit is going to find a lot more. I'd say in most cases when you're working with an enterprise that's asking to see your SOC 2 report, that's asking about your security posture, they're really only going to accept a type 2. So would you say that type 1 isn't looked upon as seriously as type 2? Absolutely. I would say it's not looked upon as seriously. I would say most clients, there's really no reason to get a type 1. For the most part, if an enterprise asks you for SOC 2, what they mean is SOC 2 type 2. And if you tell them, we've entered our observation period, we anticipate being complete on X date, that's what they're going to care about. Sending them a type 1 in the meantime is not really going to change the requirement that you get a type 2 eventually. And in most cases, if you tell them you're getting a type 2, they'll be okay without you getting a type 1. To be honest, for a lot of our clients, unless there's a special circumstance, I advise them to skip the type 1, go right to a type 2, do it correctly, and then the enterprise you're dealing with, just tell them the truth, which is that you are in your type 2 audit period, you are meeting all the controls, and you anticipate having your report on X date in the future. That's what an enterprise is going to want to see anyway. Whether or not you have a type 1 in addition is really not going to change anything.